Any human virtue or perfection that we strive to cultivate in our lifetime is but a faint image of God's perfection. And ironically, of all God's perfections, of all God's virtues, the one virtue that reigns supreme is God's simplicity. And it's this simplicity of God which Jesus in the gospel that I just read invites us to imitate. Be perfect as your heavenly Father is perfect. By nature, God is simple, for he's not composed of parts. We used to say in the old creed, he is absolutely indivisible. Now we, on the other hand, as human beings, we consist of bodies and souls. That's our nature. And since we cannot change our nature, our simplicity must consist in the way we think and the way we intend and the way we act. In other words, we are who we will ourselves to be. Now, believe it or not, there are different types of simplicity. Not all simplicity is holy and spiritual. For instance, the devil is diabolically simple. Why do I say that? Because all his thoughts, all his intentions, all his actions have only one purpose, and that is to try and destroy God. A man of the world, a very successful businessman, can be often quite simple because his success, all his power, all his energy centers on one purpose, one big aim, one objective in life. And that objective is that he will be wealthy, that he will be powerful, and that through his money and his powerful, he'll establish a reputation. Now, let's look at spiritual simplicity which is something we're invited to look at in the gospel. In his book, The Imitation of Christ, Thomas de Kempis tells us that a person is raised up from the earth on two wings, on the wing of simplicity and on the wing of purity. There must be simplicity in our intention and purity in our desires. So simplicity is a virtue that deals chiefly, if not exclusively, with our intention. So when a person has one intention, one principal intention, and when that intention is aimed at serving and pleasing God, and all other intentions that they may have are secondary to that intention, to the extent that they employ all their power and all their means at their disposal to carry out this primary intention, then that person is living a life of simplicity. And two people who help us to see what that virtue looks like are Jesus as a man who came into this world and Mary his mother. They are perfect examples of simplicity in its highest form. Because Christ on earth had one idea, he had one aim, he had one intention, and that intention was to always do the will of the Father, even to the most minute detail. The Blessed Virgin Mary exemplifies the virtue of simplicity in a very high degree. Our Lady, being holy and totally human, she loved persons and she loved things. But her love for things and for persons weren't solely for herself, but because these things and the people whom she loved all reflected the image of God. And so the Blessed Virgin Mary was truly simple. She was always aiming at God. She was always saying and doing to fulfill God's will. 
So the question we have to ask ourselves is, to what degree do we have the virtue of simplicity? To what extent does an ordinary day in our lives have as its principal aim and objective to do God's will? That everything we do that day and everything that we say and even to the point we think is centered around God's will. Now, if we consider the way in which we spend our time, I, I think we find that our days are divided into three unequal parts. There's the part that we reserve for God. And then there's the other part that we reserve for our neighbors and people outside of ourselves. But believe it or not, we keep the lion's share of our day for ourselves. So if we looked at how much time we prayed, like, and added to that going to Mass on Sunday, and added to that the times we go to confession, and the times that we make an occasional retreat or a parish mission or a novena, and we add these minutes together, they say that we give God about 5% of our average week. And our biggest excuse is we're too busy. We're too busy to do anything more. But if we who say we're too busy to pray, then it's true. We're too busy. I'm inviting you to cultivate this virtue of simplicity by, by reflecting on this beautiful virtue and give it a place in your life. To, to pray for the virtue of the grace of simplicity. To ask God to help us to achieve the one purpose of our lives, which we learn from the moment we open the Baltimore Catechism. And that purpose, that one aim, that sole intention is to know and to love and to serve God and to be happy with him. In other words, bottom line, we should have the simple intention of wanting to be saints. Let me conclude by reminding you of a way that you can keep this virtue of simplicity in your heart and learn to esteem it. And that is two ways. By saying the Angelus every day to Our Lady. Because in the Angelus, there are those beautiful words that help us to focus and to remind us of what our purpose is. Behold the handmaid of the Lord. Let it be done to me according to your word. And when we pray the Our Father, and we hear what Jesus taught us to say, your will be done, O Father, on earth today as it is in heaven. Amen.